And by the way, I'm here to tell you that none of this is real. And change is not easy, but it's worth it. It's so fruitful. <laughs>
you're free, you can do whatever you want. And then they go outside. And on their way outside of this cave, their eyes, it's hard to adjust to this new perception of reality. It's not so easy to, to see this new reality. And then they see the sun, and then they see the water and the grass, and they see their own body, and eventually they see a horse. But they, they don't understand because that shadow was a horse. And now we have this, this big, three-dimensional being that has its own smell and life and feeling and emotion and touch. But this is a whole new world for this enslaved person who is now free because they went throughout their lives perceiving one thing and now they know something else to be true. They are awakened. They pull, peeled back a layer of reality for themselves and in this newfound reality they realize I have to share this knowledge I can't keep all this knowledge to myself I have to share with my my people so this enslaved this formerly enslaved freed person goes down into the cave and again it's it's a little bit hard to see to go back down into that that level of perception when they go and speak to these enslaved people, their, this, their enslaved friends that they've known so long, and tell them what happened, the enslaved people do not believe him, him, her, they. They don't believe this person. And they not only do they not believe this freed person, they laugh in their face. They mock and ridicule like, you are crazy. You, they, that upstairs world got you, they got you loopy in the head. What did they do to you? No, no, no. We know what's real. We know what has always been real. This shadow, that's a horse. What you're talking about is some fairy tale land that you made up. Yeah, go, go away, go away. And this freed person could only stand there stunned, like, but how can, I'm not wrong, you know, but how can you explain a whole new perception of reality to someone who has not yet perceived this reality? So this freed person goes back up into the, the, I don't, the, the land, the, the up, you know, the earth, the world, that they're no longer in the cave, they go back up and in doing so reflects that there are different perceptions of reality based on experience. And I could keep this to myself, but I know, I know that there is more. I know what is to be true. So this person continues to contemplate, how can I help? How can I be of service to shifting reality for others? to awakening others to so much beauty that this world has to offer. That's the allegory of the cave. If you are enjoying this video, please click and subscribe. My goal is a thousand subscribers by 2024. It's currently May 30th right now. So I'm super excited to reach my goal and to have you guys along for the journey. This allegory, as you may have noticed, symbolizes the journey from ignorance to the world of enlightenment and how challenging it could be to convey truth to others still stuck in the matrix and in the world of ignorance and unawareness, lack of consciousness. Prisoners in the cave represent those that are trapped in the cycle of illusionment. The shadows represent the false reality that we perceive every day. The journey outside of the cave represents that journey to enlightenment and truth and the free person in the story represents layers being shed like an onion of our reality. So what can we learn from the allegory of the cave? Number one, the allegory highlights how our perception of reality 
is shaped by our lived experiences and how our lived experiences can create a distorted version of reality itself. The allegory stresses the idea of critical thinking and how important it is to dive deeper into consciousness, questioning everything, ourselves, how we think, how we perceive the world, how others perceive the world, and the world itself. It also demonstrates the resistance of change. Not everyone is on the path to enlightenment, and that's okay. There are people who are okay with the status quo, who don't want to question their own beliefs or challenges that the world faces because they simply have a problem embracing change. Because if they embrace change, that may mean that they will have to change, grow, and alter in some way. And change is not easy, but it's worth it. It's so fruitful. So that brings me to what you came here for how to develop a consciousness lifestyle practice. I'm gonna share tips that have helped me along my journey in hopes that it will help you as well. So, looking at my notes, number one, and perhaps the most important on this list, but who am I kidding? I think they're all equally important. The pursuit of consciousness is an ongoing journey. You don't just arrive at enlightenment. I myself, as a yoga teacher for a decade, I was so into my practice before the pandemic hit, and then I went about a good two years without really meditating, without focusing on myself, without serving others, because one, we were in a pandemic, and two, I lost myself. I got into my ego space thinking that, oh, I know all these yoga tools, I can, I'm fine. And I seeped into the deepest depression of my life because I started believing that I had arrived to consciousness. My ego space had, had led me to believe that because I wasn't focusing on consciousness, I wasn't focused on developing my mind, my perception of others became skewed and my perception of reality henceforth became skewed as well never assume that you know everything. I call it a yoga practice, not a yoga perfect, because there are layers to consciousness and getting to know ourselves. It's a daily practice. Shifting realities is like shedding an onion. You peel back a layer and you get to know yourself a little bit more. You peel back another layer and you get to know others more. You peel back another layer of reality and you your perception of reality shifts at large and you keep peeling and peeling. You never just arrive. It's an ongoing practice. Number two, cognitive dissonance is a real thing. You can't save anyone who does not want to be saved, helped, changed, or altered in any way. But that does not mean we should stop attempting to be of service to the world in any way that we can, because you never know what seeds of enlightenment, what seeds of love that you will plant in someone's mind. But know that no one changes overnight, not even you. Everything in nature takes time. There are many paths to enlightenment. There's no one way or one perfect way to get there. I suggest a mixture of psychological exploration, spiritual development, and a physical practice to assist you on your journey of becoming enlightened through discrimination that we see in this world, through our words, our thoughts, and our actions, not only to reach enlightenment for ourselves, but for society at large and to create the world we wanna see. Number four, pausing and taking a deep breath is always a good idea. Number five, question everything, even your own assumptions of reality because our reality is limited by the world that we perceive. It's limited by our lived experiences. A white man can have an entirely different perception of reality than a black woman because they live two entirely different experiences. But the truth is, there is only one reality. There is one singular truth. I can have my truth, someone can have their own truth, but in the grand scheme of truth, 
outside of the matrix, there is only one. So question everything, question what I'm saying, question what your teachers tell you, question your own thoughts and your belief patterns. If you think that the world is awful and it sucks and you deeply believe that, question that, question why. If you think the world is beautiful, question that, question everything all the time because through these questions is how we find the answers and shed those layers like an onion to reach enlightenment, to dive into consciousness, to Find a more holistic way of being. If you are ready to break through the matrix, reshape your perception of reality and rewrite the narrative in your mind, then join me for a private yoga and mindset coaching. You can hit the link in the description box, send me a message, slide into my DMs, and I will get back to you. I work with women to transform their lives and create a whole new world, step into the lives that they've always wanted and create a new reality. We can become so trapped in the matrix thinking that the world we perceive is actually reality, but I'm here to tell you a new truth. You can shape your reality based on your own consciousness. You can have the life of your dreams. And by the way, I'm here to tell you that none of this is real. The money, the cars, the way society is shaped is not reality. We know that because in an entirely different country, they have their own laws, they have their own perceptions of reality. What does that tell us? That none of this is real. Only love is real. Human beings stuck in a false perception of reality are killing other people because of a narrative that they've created in their mind. I believe that the conscious journey, the conscious path is so vital to the world at large. The truth that I believe is that only love is real and all these false perceptions around love, that's the matrix. That's the thing that keeps us afraid, sad, sick, and trapped in false illusions. Let's step out of the world of illusionment. Let's disillusion ourselves. Let's stop this indoctrination that society tells us what's real, what's false, who's good and who's bad, and step into the truth out of the matrix. On its own, green pieces of paper that we call money is only that. It's only green pieces of paper. It can't actually feed us on its own. It can't actually clothe us the only power that money has is the false power that we give to it that says if we have more of these pieces of paper, then we have it all. That is a false reality. That is living in the world of illusionment. But with this knowledge of all these little things that are already exist in life, this gives you facts that we can create the reality that we want. We can shape the world that we truly want. It all starts up here with consciousness, with diving into the truth, with awakening reality and seeing the world for what it actually is. I'm ready for people who are ready for a full life transformation to reshape the narrative of their minds and to step out of this world of indoctrination. Not just ready for people who want to do physical yoga practice. That's not only what I do, although we do get nice and sweaty. We have physical yoga. We have mindset coaching. I am an accountability partner and a yoga coach and a mindset coach all in one. So if you're looking for that accountability, if you're ready to step out of the world of indoctrination, hit me up. The point is, we have the power to create our internal reality and our external reality. Let's create the world we wanna see. Before I forget, I have written two blog posts about consciousness. If you want to dive deeper into the concept of it all, I share one story with a white woman yogi who well, I'll let you read the story. And the second is a follow-up on these tips here. So you can read both. The links are in the description box. Till next time, I wish you happiness and freedom. Anywhere you go, anywhere you go, give it up.